Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Jamie aka Rick here bringing you part 23 of my GTA 4 Let's Play. In this episode I go and find uh, Dwayne's ex-girlfriend and her new boyfriend as you saw me in the cutscene with Dwayne last time right at the end uh, talking about this and uh, he asked me to go and kill them basically and get the money back that uh, he's owed or that he paid out to his ex while he was in prison you know so she could stay in her house and all that stuff you know pay rent so so yeah I've got going to get that, that back and uh, I decided to leave her alive because that uh, you know it's his girlfriend he doesn't really want her dead he's just saying that because he's like angry so I choose not to kill her and uh, that's actually the second time I've chose to save someone I think the other one was right at the start for I can't remember who it was for now but but yeah I chose not to kill them either so that was you know two good deeds out of you know, I had the option, obviously, to kill both of them, and I didn't, so... No, it's all good. But I chased down the boyfriend and, uh... Killed him, shot him off his bike. Wasn't the most difficult thing. And then stole his bike, after that. And took the money back to Dwayne. You know, he was kind of happy that I hadn't killed her, so... I think that was the right thing to do. And then, after that, I go and see that policeman. Uh, I think it was McCreary, something like that. And, uh, he's still getting blackmailed, so... That wasn't the end of it, but this time it's from like a lawyer type guy, so it's a bit more serious. And uh, you know, it's a big lawyer, so you can't just go up to him on the street and shoot him, you know, because he'll have bodyguards and stuff, so... He tells me to apply to the lawyer firm, because uh, obviously this guy will do the interview, so... If I apply there, then uh, I'll be in the same room as him, and I have the opportunity to... to uh, kill him, you know, get the... I think his photos again something like that, I don't know, off, off of his desk while I'm in there, so, so yeah, I apply for that, go to, obviously, email to apply for that, and then I go and buy a suit, you know, some new shoes and stuff, you know, smart and, smart and knee up a bit, because at the moment, I've just been wearing jeans and, like, a bomber jacket pretty much, and that's it, so, doesn't look that good, but, uh, definitely looks a lot smarter with a suit, so, big fan of that, uh, and then I go and see Dwayne again, like uh, a bit later on and uh, he's complaining that all his like, businesses that he owned and stuff have been taken over by other people which uh, you know will happen while he's been in jail and uh, Playboy's not done anything about it really he's just kind of gone along with it and uh, you know, he's obviously Dwayne's a bit annoyed by that so I get start getting him back or Nico says that uh, he'll help Dwayne get his uh, you know businesses back so he can get running again. So I think the first one is a, sh a men's club, like a strip club basically. And uh, so yeah, we go there. I'm gonna go there in the next video, I think. At the end of this is just the cutscene again with Dwayne. So you know, set the scene for the next video. So yeah, that's that's pretty much what happens in this video. But uh, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about MLG again because. Obviously, you know, I was last commentary was Friday, and uh, that was when it was just about to start. I was literally doing the commentary a couple of hours before it started, and uh, it was uploading during the first match, which was absolutely amazing. But I'll get to that in a minute. Oh uh, yeah, so yeah, now it's finished. Finished last night, and uh, yeah, I'm recovering. Uh, a lot of late nights, obviously, because I'm in the UK. Uh, the stream started at like I think it was about. On the first day, on Friday, it started at 10 p.m. and didn't finish till 5 in the morning. So I had to be at work at like half 11 the next day. So that was a long night. Then the next one, obviously, it started at 4, but I didn't get back till like 8, 9. So I didn't see all of that. But yeah, again, it was up until 5 again in the morning. So I stayed up again to watch that. And then Sunday, again, it started at 4, but I wasn't home again because I worked again. But yeah, and again it was until, I think, like 2 or 3 in the morning, so I stayed up for that as well. So, it's a few late nights and not enough sleep, really. But I had a lot of food, and, you know, went out uh, to Tesco on Thursday night, I think it was. Got some food and drinks and stuff to last me the weekend. It did, a lot of Mountain Dew, you know, keep me awake for those hours. But it's all good, I'm through it now, so probably going to go to bed earlier tonight and uh, actually catch up on some sleep before doing my marathon of commentaries I've got to do so I can
go away this weekend and enjoy a music festival without worrying about these videos as much. So yeah, I've got to get like four or five videos uploaded to them tomorrow, you know, in time for the when I go away. So yeah, it's going to be hard, but it's cool. I've rested up, had a long night's sleep. Oh, I should be right. So yeah, now into MLG. Like I said, the first game I watched, I watched mainly StarCraft games. I watched some Halo, a little bit of COD, but not that much. So yeah, the first StarCraft game I watched was Idra. So one of my, not my favourite players, but he is an amazing player, I will admit. Um, and against MC, which is one of the one of the three Koreans that was invited over for this tournament. First time ever that Koreans have come over for MLG, so it was good to see him there. And uh, it was an amazing matchup. So, see MC being a Protoss, Zerg versus Protoss isn't the most easy thing for the Zerg. But uh, Idra went out 2 0. He, like both of them, long macro games, I think they were both like 15 20 minutes each. Not like, well, actually, it might have been longer than that, it might have been up to like half an hour. Not like the little quick cheesy games at like 10 15 minutes. You know, I prefer long half an hour, for, uh, 35 minute games macro orientated you know they're a lot more interesting to watch I think because it takes a bit more well, I'm not going to say skill but you know it's just obviously prolongs the viewing experience so it's always good um, yeah so that was a great opening I mean I think that was casted by Day9 DJ Wheat so very good start and uh, you know it kind of got better as the uh, week weekend went on um, Bit up, like bit down about Select. He's my favourite player, StarCraft uh, two player, and uh, he went through his group and lost all five games. I think, which is a, a bit annoying because obviously being my favourite player, you want to see him win. He's really high seeded after last event. I think he finished third or fourth in the last event, so he's really high seeded for this one, and he didn't do very well at all. So I think in the end he finished about. 15th I'm not sure exactly what where he finished but yeah it wasn't nowhere near where he should have been really it's a bit disappointing but hopefully uh, I think it's the end of July the next one so hopefully by then he'll have uh, practiced a little bit more and uh, hopefully we'll see him win the next one that'd be amazing so yeah um, the Koreans obviously we knew they would be they would be good, and uh, a couple of them, or all three of them, really had an equal chance to win it with a couple of the other um, American players. But uh, it turned out that all three Koreans placed one, two, three. So that was that was a bit shocking. I mean, for some people that, that happened, but you know they are a lot better. Or not, I'm not going to say better, but I think they've been playing it for longer as a country. So, uh, and hopefully that will spur the rest of the world on to become better at the game. So, you know, no one likes to get stomped in their own country by some Koreans, I wouldn't imagine. So, you never know, next time you might see a bit more, a bit more interesting, you know. Some of the Koreans might get knocked out earlier than they did this time, which obviously they didn't because they only knocked each other out, really. So, yeah, that was, it was good. I mean, I was hoping for select win obviously or um, I don't know who else Druby I like Root Druby he's a good player and obviously Destiny as well I watch his stream all the time Destiny so I like him as a person and uh, he I don't know he didn't place that well either I don't think got quite a low position at the end uh, yeah but hopefully he can improve again next time see him uh, seed a little bit higher or position a little bit higher at the end so yeah, that's, you know, looking forward to that in just like a month and a half time, something. It's not that long, so I imagine that'd be amazing, as this one was as well. So, uh, what else have I got to say about this? Uh, yeah, the final, which was MMA versus La Sierra, two Koreans, obviously. So it was only that it was an extended series because they'd met before, and uh, MMA had won two one in that series, I think it was. So MMA only had to win two, I think it was, to win it, and Lucia had to like win three on the trot. So that was a bit, a bit tough for him. But, uh, MMA ended up winning two, two zero. You know, it wasn't convincing, like hugely convincing, but it was, it was really good. Like the first one, 
it was like a 40 minute game I think it was and uh, MMA was just doing like these drops on all the different bases of La Sierra the whole time and uh, you know La Sierra was holding he was obviously losing stuff each time but he was holding them quite well and then as he obviously expanded more his army became stretched out too much because MMA kept doing these drops as well as holding his front like you know keeping his bases secure obviously because while you're attacking you can't defend as well as you can normally but you know he seemed to MMA's amazing macro and micro so he always had a huge army and uh, his units always did the kind of maximum that they could have done really in the situations so I definitely think that he was the best player I mean a lot better I'm not gonna say a lot better than the Sierra but from what I've seen he was better just the fact that he could multitask that much he could drop on a couple of bases at a time as well as defending or, or attacking the main of uh, La Sierra, which was it's hard to do. I I can't do it. I can't even attack one base really without forgetting, uh, you know, what what map I'm on or something like that. You know, I haven't got that multitasking skill yet. So yeah, hopefully eventually I'll be like that, but I highly doubt it. I won't be. It will be a couple of years probably before I'm even halfway there. I'd imagine. So it's all good, but yeah, it was an amazing match to watch. So eventually, as a uh, the supply got higher obviously the drops weren't as a big chunk of his army so uh, while he was dropping and uh, La Sierra was moving to intercept the base like the drops on his bases uh, MMA was pushing forward closer and closer with like some tanks and stuff and medevacs and marines uh, he's pushing closer to his base eventually after MMA took out the spawning pool of uh, La Sierra's like Zerg so obviously you can't build any units or you, you can't build Zerglings I think it is which uh, he was relying on quite a bit because uh, he had the upgrades for him and uh, he was using Banelings as well so you, can, you need Banelings no you need Zerglings to make Banelings so so yeah there is that There's, you know it cut down his uh, defence quite a lot because he was using Zerglings to counter the drops as well as Mutalisks but obviously uh, marines in little numbers don't do too well against mutalists but eventually those mutalists were being worn down and worn down and worn down and uh, you know MMA just kept piling on the pressure and yeah, La Sierra eventually snapped see because he was too thin his army uh, MMA pushed the front and kind of not steamrolled him but pushed him back so much that he had to kind of give it up and then the second game was uh, a bit shorter this time but uh Again, I think uh, MMA, uh, La Sierra went for a kind of a all-in type build. He managed to get out of it, obviously, to, at the start of the match. MMA brought in a Reaper in his base. That got like nine kills or something on drones, which obviously sets you back quite a lot. And then uh, La Sierra went for a, some kind of crazy all-in just to try and put MMA off a little bit. It was scouted very luckily. Well, I would say luckily, it seemed lucky to me, but it probably wasn't. But yeah, so MMA scouted it, the fact that it was a baneling bust type ball in, and uh, managed to like hold it just. And uh, he ended up building his army back up, obviously countering, because after an all in, you're not in the best position. So he ended up, it took a long time still to wear him down, but uh, the Terran pushed up, obviously, the Zerg was flanking round to come into the Terran's base but the units from the Terran were pushing up on the Zerg's base so I think you know obviously the Zerg had to pull back and he was caught out of position a little bit because all the tanks from the Terran were sieged up and it just didn't work out very well but you know it's a, it's, you know, it's a good game it was a fantastic final but I think still the another thing that annoyed me a little bit about the tournament was Idra I have seen two owed MC the first time they met up. The second time they met up, um, MC went 4 and 0, I think, because obviously it's extended series again. So Idra only had to win 2, MC had to win 4. And uh, he did that. MC won 4 on the trot, which, I don't know. It seemed to me like Idra had kind of given up on that match a little bit, which is a bit annoying for me, because I've wanted to see Idra win it, even though he's not my favourite player. He's a bit bad mannered at times, but he is a fantastic player. I will admit that. So I would like to have seen him win it, but it looked like he gave up to me. 
as he just hired some like ridiculous all in cheeses and uh you know I mean I'm not obviously a pro player so I don't know what was going through his mind but the first three were kind of ridiculous for his calibre of player he shouldn't be doing those tactics really because they don't really they do work obviously on if you catch your opponent off guard but MC was always well prepared to deal with him and uh, you know that was the first three games over really quickly the fourth one he went back to his obviously macro play got up two really early expansions and uh, you know, put a lot of pressure on MC but it's again overwhelmed him MC's uh, macro was slightly better he had a lot of units and uh, you know the endless waves from the Zerg couldn't couldn't uh, peg back at MC so yeah <sighs> sorry yawning I'm tired still but so yeah the endless waves from the Zerg couldn't um, couldn't push back the Protoss enough to do the damage that he needed so eventually it was worn down and uh, MC just you know won so I was a bit disappointing to see that uh, select obviously flop out quite badly and uh, Idra seemingly give up near the end but it was a great tournament nevertheless and uh, you know looking forward to the next one hopefully the Koreans will come back again because they, they uh, provide some fantastic matches uh, right that's Starcraft done uh, oh actually no not yet not quite I've got to say uh, Tasteless and Artosis never heard them cast before they were fantastic. I mean, obviously Day9 and DJ Wheat, I've heard a lot of times. They are brilliant. But Tasteless and Artotis were fantastic. I think they were two of the best. I think they were better, actually. I wouldn't say better because you can't really compare them as much, but they're funnier. I think Nick, Tasteless, is a really funny guy. And they're together, they kind of, you know, they kind of spring off of each other. A really good uh, duo. So I'm looking forward to seeing more of them casting. Might tune into their uh, GSL program that they run in uh, Korea. That would be quite interesting to watch. So yeah, that's that's it from StarCraft. Uh, I watched a bit of Halo. Didn't get much time, obviously, because I was watching a hell of a lot of StarCraft 2. At the matches I did see, I saw a couple of straight rippings matches. They weren't very high seeded coming into the tournament, but uh, they did really well. Obviously, I've heard of the three of them, like, I think it's what's T-squared, legit, and oh, who's their other player? I can't remember who else it was now. But yeah, I'd heard of those three anyway. And then the other one, it was like a really good noob or something like that. I hadn't really heard of him, but uh, from the games I watched, he was unreal. He was just like, gunning these stupidly good sniper sprees and stuff. Connecting with so many headshots. He was like a snipe down, basically, but I don't know. So yeah, he's like Snipe Down used to be. I mean, Snipe Down's still good, but he doesn't do it as much as he used to. It's not quite as good, I don't think. I don't know. Maybe it's just I haven't watched him enough. But yeah, so Straight Ripping seemed really strong. And obviously Instincts, they were, on paper, probably the strongest team in the world right now. We've got, is it Roy, Lunchbox, Pistola, and... Who else is it? Boy, lunchbox, pistola. I can't remember who the fourth player for them is either. Not much. Oh, Ogre Two. Yeah, yeah, Ogre Two. So yeah, um, obviously four of the best players in the world. Pistola being my favourite player uh, from Halo. He's a, uh, you know, he's so hard to kill. And, uh, he finds these good escape routes and stuff. He's really good to watch. But yeah, Instinct looked insanely strong throughout the whole tournament. I think they dropped like one game the whole tournament. So it went like something ridiculous, like twenty-two and one. I think they 3 0 straight ripping in the final, so. So, yeah, it was obviously Instinct straight ripping final. Two of the strongest teams battling it out. I uh, didn't see much of it, but uh, it was good what I saw of it. And, uh, you know, Instinct definitely deserving the win, so. Yeah, I'll look forward to seeing them next tournament, I think. I'll probably catch a bit more Halo next time. So, I caught a lot of StarCraft this time. I didn't get to see the other, the other two things that much. I didn't see any of COD, I didn't actually watch it. I don't find it that interesting, like, competitively to watch. I mean, playing is good, but watching is not too good. But anyway, congratulations on Optic for winning their first tournament, nonetheless. Uh, obviously, they've got a huge following. And uh, they had two competitive teams go, so they had quite a high chance of winning it, but they did. They done well. 
battled through the tournament. They didn't drop many matches either. So, so yeah, they they done well. Congratulations on winning their first tournament. Hopefully, they do good again next time. Uh, finally, just quickly, I just got to say that MLG Stream and Arena had some drastic improvements to it, and uh, it was a lot better quality than last time. The stream was amazing quality. And I uh, think, like, they had one hiccup, I think, when it had a thunderstorm. But other than that, it ran smoothly the whole time. And the arena looked amazing. By the looks of it, there weren't enough chairs. But, you know, you can't really help that. You don't really know exactly how many people are going to be there. But, yeah. So, congratulations for all the winners and MLG for doing, holding a great tournament. I uh, look forward to the next one. Thanks for watching this video. And I'll see you next time for episode 24. Thanks for watching.